find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't stopping yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Peanut for the taste of the blood. Hey guys, it's another episode of the Indie Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here in Pittsburgh, PA. Video producer here for some local wrestling um and hey it's episode 40 and i'm on with uh, a guy i've done 40 of these with amen at amen 2 please is announced down with the great nwa inspire pro wrestling i remembered this time <laughs> thank you happy thank you, 40th sir. i remembered to put the nwa in the right place thank you i i, I it's weird it's almost technically almost at a year so that's kind of crazy to think about so we'll have had, awesome we'll had almost if not at least 50 of these before the end of the year jeez that's awesome that's great uh <laughs> so uh we gotta make them good ones i don't know we got we need a special one for 50 anyways this is the indie mayhem show you can find us uh indie mayhem show on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio um and uh, also follow wrestling mayhem show on the youtube so you can follow everything we're doing over at wrestling mayhem show.com including this show including other shows like the wrestling game show that amen is apparently a game show host on um Mm -hmm. wrap-up shows for the big guys like tna uh uh, nxt raw um and the wrestling mayhem show proper of course and classic interviews superfly jimmy stucco went up this week mike quackenbush last week i figure it was a nice pairing for uh, Bryce that we had on two weeks ago. Uh, so, uh, and also big thanks to Basic Sickness, basicsickness.com for our intro, music, and outro. Uh, and you can drop us a line at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com, 412-206-WMS0. And join us live here Tuesday nights, live.sorgatronmedia.com, 11 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 p.m. Central for Amen. And, uh, and, and become part of the conversation, maybe ask questions of our guests yourself uh so with that amen the guy your guest is from your neck of the woods i believe it is it's my turn it was my turn for a guest and and i this is actually a person i've had i wanted to have on for a good while uh this uh this guy's been tearing up across the national wrestling alliance specifically he debuted uh for inspire pro wrestling this past sunday uh but he's been doing some amazing stuff for for a good while and it's great to have him on uh ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the indie mayhem show uh killer mckenzie how are you doing tonight Pretty good. How are y'all? Fantastic. Uh, it's obviously coming off of Inspire for uh, Wrestling. We'll talk a bit, little bit more about your experiences uh, from this past weekend. Uh, but I guess uh, the best way to start it off, and, and the way we kind of started off with all of our guests, is uh, sort of an icebreaker of sorts. What is uh, your first ever memory of professional wrestling? Oh man, let me see. Uh, it had to have been uh, maybe. 1991 or 92, 93, I guess when uh, Hulk Hogan was in WCW, I remember mm-hmm. catching something on, on TV uh, and he was whipping the tar out of somebody with that weight belt and the, you know, <laughs> the crowd was going ballistic. It, it had to have been like a WCW Saturday night thing. So it wasn't as huge as, as, as I thought it, as I thought it was at the time, but he was just going to town on somebody. And I was like, wow, he's beating crap out of this guy. So that was probably my earliest memory. And then after that, it kind of, it kind of fell off a little bit. I didn't. I didn't really watch wrestling until I was probably twelve, thirteen years old when the NWO was huge, and that's what really kind of lit the fire underneath me to really want to get into it. So awesome! And I mean, with the NWO and stuff like that, was there any sort of qualities or, or sort of aspects that sort of stuck out to you that caught your eye as far as professional wrestling goes? Uh, you know, sort of was it the athleticism? Was it the characters? You know, what can you pick up? Uh, it was a lot of the athleticism. I, you know, I'm, uh, and I was a, I was a fan of the bigger guys. Because I myself, I'm, a, I'm a big guy. I was a big kid, so, um, and I, I've always been, a, you know, pretty athletic. I would say for for my size, and so it was, that was what I was drawn to. So the bigger guys who were athletic, who could move, those were the guys I gravitated to, and those were the ones I watched. Those were the ones I really enjoyed. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow by far is my favorite wrestler of all time. And I try to emulate a lot of his stuff, so uh, you'll see that if you watch some of my matches. Absolutely, I can For definitely sure. see that. Um, so the transition from 
watching wrestling and becoming a fan of it to getting into it. Uh, how did you how did you sort of make that transition? Uh, and how did you sort of uh, I guess the best way to put it how did you how did you find a uh, wrestling school? Um, you know, I wasn't really I wasn't really looking for it to be honest with you. Uh, hmm. It was something that was always in the back of my mind. I really wanted to do, but I, you know, I, uh, short of not, not being able to uh, to uh, drop a whole lot of money on a, on a on a good wrestling school, to just not knowing uh, where to find one, not going about, not knowing how to go about looking for one or, or whatever it is. Uh, so uh, I uh, was doing the adult thing and got a real job, and I was working for the uh, the state of Texas in the prison system. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was for about three years. And uh, a friend of mine, I ran into somebody that he knew was telling him about wrestling. And uh, they were they, there was this school that he was going to. And he made it sound great and all that stuff. And it was about fifty miles from where I live. And I said, "Well, cool. Give me give me the guy's number, and I'll uh, I'll get in touch with him." And, and so I called him the next week and uh, gave me directions out of the place. Well, driving out here, and it's in, it's on a farm. It the rings out outside of of, of a barn. There's horses and a bunch of horse crap all over the place. It's the the, the shoddiest looking ring I've ever seen. It was you know, handmade. Uh, it looked like Noah built this thing. Uh, <laughs> it was just it was it was just old and, and run down, and and that's where I got to take my first bumps, brother, in that <laughs> ring. Uh, and uh, there's been no turning back. So. Definitely. There uh, you and, have it. <laughs> and sort of, a, and obviously, the, you know, the way you describe it, very uh, uh, out, of the, out of the norm as far as uh, sort of wrestling goes in that. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing it that way <laughs> by any means. Find, find a reputable school. Find, find someone who's going to teach you everything that you need, to, you need to be taught before you ever entertain the idea of having a match. Uh, but... It was what it was, and uh, it it led to bigger and better things. And obviously, I got I got I got turned in the right direction eventually, and uh, started making the right connections and started learning. And, and I very I very much learned on the go. Uh, it was uh, more more or less on the job training, and uh, here I am. Definitely, and and you've been doing this for a good while, to my knowledge. Uh, uh, how how has been you know sort of your run you know in professional wrestling been? Uh, sort of the, the places you work, because I mean you've worked for many places across, uh, especially across the National Wrestling Alliance in particular. Right. Um, how how has that been like for you? You know, sort of your your career so far, and, and the pe- the people you've gotten to face, and, and the places you've got. Um, you know, I, uh, I obviously I, I would love to have been able to do more uh, at this point. Uh, hopefully, that's that's something that's changing, uh, especially with the way the National Wrestling Alliance is being run now. There's a lot more uh, uh, synergy among the companies. Um, it's something that, that that I think bodes well for the, the National Wrestling Alliance and in in uh, professional wrestling as a whole. I, I won't call the National Wrestling Alliance independent wrestling because that's what it's it, it, that's not what it is. We're we're a group. We're an alliance, and we work together. Mm-hmm. So we're not independent wrestling. We're professional wrestling under the banner of the NWA. Uh, but you know, obviously, I, I think anybody who's had the time that I've had in would, would, would have loved to have done more with the time they've been given. Uh, um, I'm still fairly young. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm 30, but it's, that window is closing. I want to do more before I hit 35 or, you know, and, and get 38, 37, you know, 40 years old. Um, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so, uh, um, I'm not, Thinking we're gonna cut out. <laughs> What's that? Oh, you okay? You're back. Never mind. They <laughs> cut out for a second. Did I? Did I? Did I just? Oh, wow, nice. Okay. Um, well, I think we're good now. <laughs> <we're>... <laughs> um, but you know, it's um, you know, I, I've got to wrestle out of state a few times, and that's been really cool. Uh, I think more than just the wrestling, the sp- the time spent with the boys, uh, going on going on trips, uh, mm-hmm. cutting up during the shows, you know, having just a good time with, with the boys and you, you really, you really make a, a family with these guys that, that you work with on a, on a, a weekly basis, you know, sometimes you're with them four or five days at a time and you, you really develop a close bond with these guys. I think that's been, that, that's been the most important thing that I've taken away from, from my time in professional wrestling thus far is, uh, is the, uh, the brotherhood with, uh, with the guys, man. So. 
definitely. Yeah. And I think we, I mean, some of the other guests that we've had on, we talked about the whole idea of, of kinship, you know, and, and, and working together. And, and, and especially with the National Wrestling Alliance, like you mentioned, a, a group of people, you know, looking to work together. Uh, speaking of the National Wrestling Alliance, one of the, one of the promotions that you call uh, your, your, I would say, call your home uh, primarily would be uh, NWA 360 out of Texas, or out of uh, Temple, Texas. Uh, and, and you guys have. And you guys have been, uh, as of recent, producing some really amazing stuff. I know uh, one of your last events uh, at the uh, Belton Expo Center drew in, uh, a really phenomenal crowd, a really uh, great showing. And it seems like um, that promotion has been involving a great deal. Uh, uh, How has that been like uh, as part of uh, uh, NWA 360? Well, you know, I, um, it, it's no secret that uh, Ryan Genesis was running uh, mm -hmm. NWA 360. Um, and, um, uh, there were, you know, there was a bit of a lull and, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of communication. So myself and Aaron Presley took, uh, kind of took the reins and decided, Hey man, let's get this company turned around. Let's do this right, the right way. Let's really try to bust our butts and promote professional wrestling in central Texas. And it, 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 it took a little bit, man. You know, our, our first show, we, uh, <laughs> we, we didn't draw a crap, man. We had maybe 17 people in the crowd. And then that that's when we looked at each other. We had, we had to do a long, hard look in the mirror and we go, Hey, we can't have that on every show. It's doing a disservice to the boys. It's doing a disservice to the fans that, that do show up. It's doing a disservice to professional wrestling in general. So we really, we really buckled down. We really started trying to promote the right way. And Aaron Presley has busted his butt getting this company back off the ground and running. Uh, we have a show coming up. Uh, I won't say show. I, I hate that. I hate that that term. <laughs> we have an event coming up on November first at the at the Bell County Expo Center. Uh, and if and if our last or if our last event on June twenty seventh was any indication of what we're trying to do there, I think November first um, will double our expectations um, for for what we had on the June show uh, um, event rather. Um, yeah, a lot of good things are going here, man. We're, we're teaming up with the Children's Hospital here in town, uh, Scott mm -hmm. and White, uh, McLean, uh, Scott and White Children's Hospital. Uh, we plan to work with them uh, for as long as we can. Uh, so that's something that we really, really, really look forward to doing uh, for this next event. Uh, we're going to host a pizza party for the kids uh, at the hospital, so they're going to come over to the uh, the Expo Center uh, uh, before bell time, and we're going to host a pizza party for them. And just let them let them be a part of something really cool, because they don't get to do that all the time. They're stuck in the hospital fighting battles that are unimaginable mm -hmm. to a normal person, normal normal healthy person. So, uh, you know, we want to do something good for them and and try to help them out as much as possible. So that's what we're doing for this for this upcoming event. Awesome, and, and I think I think that's something really cool that you guys are doing is you know not just putting on wrestling shows or events, uh, but also being a part of that community. I think that's you know really really great stuff that you and, and Aaron Presley and, and and those guys are putting out there. Um, uh, speaking though of also of the NWA, uh, I know uh, it was this past weekend that you made your uh, big debut for NWA Inspire Pro. Uh, Finally, uh, yes, uh, your first appear appearance for us uh, came uh, a bit abrupt as you got into, into a bit of a bit of a pull apart with uh, the great depression uh and and, yeah. and that led to uh, the, the eventual match that you had uh, this past sunday uh, uh just uh, coming out of it how, how do you feel uh, everything went uh oh uh, man could have been better i think uh, i don't and, I know you two got a bit i know you two got a bit interrupted during that match but uh, <laughs> uh i feel like i was building some momentum um the great depression is definitely an oddity in the world of professional wrestling and he packs a wallop. I am definitely feeling the effects from that match. I'm sure he's still feeling the effects of the match. Um, unfortunately it, it did not end the way I wanted it to end. So we're going to have to deal with that issue coming up on the next uh, couple of the uh, inspire events and then we'll go from there. But by no means am, am I done with the great depression by no means. Definitely. And, and YouTube busted a lot, I believe, also. Uh, uh, the, you can find it somewhere on Twitter. Somebody finds uh, you've been busting out a moonsault of all things on depression. Uh, <laughs> uh, you, you definitely you definitely put it all out there for this one, I'd have to say. Well, thank you. I, well, I'll tell you this. I got I got the big man off his feet. Nobody's done that yet. So Very true. I'll, yeah, definitely. Uh, so definitely some unfinished business there uh, between you two. So we'll have to see uh, how that all goes. Um 
Uh, the, one of the last questions we do want to ask, and it's a, uh, the it's become sort of our regular question whenever we have guys on. Uh, this is a podcast sort of discussing all the the facets of independent wrestling, and then and Hall and L comes together. But uh, and and feel free to take the question uh, any which direction you want. Uh, many of our guests have taken it many different directions. But uh, uh, the question I have is, uh, in your opinion, what is the best thing about independent wrestling, and what is the worst thing about independent wrestling? <laughs> Um, the best thing, uh, I think the intimacy of, of the event, uh, Hmm. you know, whether you're, uh, that's, uh, you're putting on a performance for the crowd that's there and, and they're, they're so close to the action. They feel it. And when you get someone to come to you after after everything's said and done, and they go, my goodness, how do y'all do that? I mean, I, I, I I'm amazed. I, I I could feel everything. I could hear everything. It's you know, you guys really put on a heck of a show, you know. And it's that's that that, that that's that's a big compliment, you know, for us, uh, for 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 us who who majority of the people have no idea who we are, uh, but we make them we we have them leave knowing knowing when they come back and see us again, that they're going to get a heck of a show. We're going to, we're going to lay it all out there on the line for them and they're going to be entertained and they're going to, they're going to walk away going, my goodness, I want to go back and see that again. You know, Hey, I, they're going to remember us. They're going to, they're going to tell their friends about us. They're going to, they're going to bring people with them the next time they come. That's, that's what I love the most is being able to go out there and perform for these people who pay their hard earned money to come and watch us do what we do. Mm. The worst thing uh, I, the worst thing about independent wrestling, I think, is is the inability for some people to to, to work with others. Mm. I think it 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 shoots it, you're shooting yourself in the foot when you absolutely uh, disagree. You know, or not disagree, but just refuse to work with someone based on on whatever it may be. And and it's no secret that I that I hold a few grudges for, for a few individuals. But, you know, I'm not saying that I would never work with them. I'm not saying that that some sort of agreement can't be made because it's it's not healthy to keep a grudge and, and, and uh, burn bridges. Uh, yeah. I think that's the biggest hindrance for independent professional wrestling on as a whole is just the refusal to work with people due to whatever it may be. I think that that's the worst part about independent wrestling. Definitely. No, I wholeheartedly agree. Um, uh, so thank you, Brent, for uh, joining us. Uh, uh, if you have any upcoming events that you are uh, participating in or are working on, or uh, if people can follow you on uh, social media or, or any other uh, platform, uh, uh, feel free to uh, uh, let them know and uh, uh, plug away. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now then. Uh, <laughs> October 25th in uh, San Antonio, Texas at the Woodlawn Gym. Uh, NWA Branded Outlaw Wrestling returns to the Woodlawn Gym uh, first time in a, in a long while. I will be defending the tag team titles with my tag team partner, Moonshine Mantel. Uh, we are part of a group called the Sons of Texas, and we're doing everything we can to take over the National Wrestling Alliance. So if you see an NWA show, it shouldn't take too long before you see the Sons of Texas there whipping butt and taking names. Uh, Absolutely. I believe all you guys actually have all the belts in the NWA branded outlaws. We well. do. We own, we own all the gold in branded outlaw wrestling. Myself and Moonshine Mantel are uh, the tag team champions. Andy Dalton is the cruiserweight champion, and Cowboy James Claxton is the heavyweight champion. So that's that's going to be a heck of an event down there. James uh, James Claxton and Jack Stane will be in a San Antonio street fight, so that's something you don't want to miss. Those are two big boys going at it, and they're going to be throwing everything, including the kitchen sink at each other. Uh-huh. So that's coming up on the 25th. Uh, November first, NWA three hundred and sixty. Um, that's going to be a, that's going to be a heck of an event. Uh, NWA three hundred and sixty breakdown. We're featuring Byron Wilcott versus Tim Storm, or Big Daddy Yum Yum rather uh, <laughs> versus Tim Storm for the uh, for the NWA North American Heavyweight Title. And the, the Texas Line Houston Carson will be taking on Scott Summers for the NWA three hundred and sixty Heavyweight Championship. Um, so that's, that's going to be, that's going to be a, a, a can't miss show or an event rather. I keep saying show, even though I hate <laughs> that word, but that's, that's an event that you don't want to miss it's the Bell County Expo Center on November 1st, bell time is 7 PM. The doors open at six thirty. 
Um, after that, I'm sure I'll, I'll be getting a date for NWA Inspire pretty soon, pretty soon and look forward to coming back down there. Uh, that's something that's – that that company, they never cease to amaze me with how much they grow every every month, every show or every event that they have there. Uh, it's it's been a constant growth. Those three guys, uh, Justin, Max, and and uh, and uh, uh, Josh, man, they've they have built something really cool down there in Austin, and I'm I'm really happy to be a part of it, and I want to see it continue to grow. And we talked about it before the before bell time. Want to grow outgrow that building and get in somewhere else, and mm-hmm. that's that's what they're doing. So, uh, really proud to be a part of that for sure. Absolutely. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Kill McKenzie, go check him out uh, in a local local event near you. Oh. oh, go ahead. By the way, follow me. Follow me on Twitter. Oh, definitely, Killer McKenzie. Definitely, go check him out uh, and and go support him uh, anywhere you find him. Uh, so thank you again, Absolutely. and I believe uh, me and Sorg are going to go uh, and and talk about some independent wrestling this past weekend. Thanks, Eamon. A really awesome, awesome interview. I I, re, I found the Vine and retweeted it on the Mayhem Show account uh, of that crazy, <laughs> the moonsault <laughs> he's got uh, up there. So I make uh, it fly. Don't, don't, don't put yes, it he can. Yes, he can. So go check that out uh, over on um, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter and go follow him, Killer, Killer McKenzie. Um, so big news in the indies. Uh, and again, yes, we just qualify. We do consider ring of honor just the coolest indie out there right now uh our coolest biggest biggest, biggest most yeah. accessible that, indie, absolutely biggest. really um but they are getting pay-per-views and such but anyways but the big news of course mike elegant quitting ring of honor this is apparently legit and you said there's a face i didn't see this facebook post that, that apparently well, is out uh, there he, he apparently uh quit ring of honor via twitter um uh because ring of honor advertised michael elgin for an uh, upcoming event uh uh, sort of touched on the the fact that he wasn't uh uh you know that he had issues with his visa which is why you know he had to miss some things and and how he was making a big return they made a big sort of post about it uh on their on their website and uh michael elgin uh, replied to it sort of talking about uh, uh how he thanked ring of honor for uh helping him get back in the states but uh there were some clearly some issues uh, going on between the two the two parties and uh he he pretty much quit via Twitter. Uh, very interesting situation. He followed it hope, uh, later with a, a post on his Facebook page, though, saying, uh, I, I'll read a, a little bit of a snippet from it. He says, I first want to say thank you to all my supporters out there. It's been a pleasure to perform for you. I want to admit that quitting on Twitter is a little childish, but I don't want to be advertised for a show I won't be a part of. I will give kudos to ROH for rushing to get me back home. For that, I am grateful. I had numerous conversations with the company, about all situations that have occurred and told them my stance. I was trying to be business-minded and was trying to reach a full understanding that would allow both parties to move forward. Nothing was agreed upon, and instead of trying to reach an agreement, they announced me for this weekend's upcoming shows. I would not have taken the Twitter in this matter, as I have held my tongue this entire time. I feel everything that has went down is between the parties involved and no one else. And all that, I just want I just don't want to have people thinking I'll be somewhere I won't be. Uh, and he kind of goes on a, a bit further than that. But... Uh, yeah, very um, interesting uh, situation that's happening with Ring of Honor. It, it's interesting in the fact of, you know, Ring of Honor, you know, we, we mentioned, and we mentioned in the onset of talking about this sort of, you know, in the case of are they an indie because they have a national TV deal because they are doing all this stuff. But, you know, this kind of stuff is, this kind of quitting, I guess you could say, is, is seemed more of an indie style not to say that people should quit via social media which you know i i kind of a, a testament to how social media is is an interesting thing that uh both aids and and probably dissuades from independent wrestling um but it's it's very uh, an interesting scenario uh, obviously uh i don't know the exact specifics of what has happened but uh there's cl- clearly some issue between the two as far as reaching an agreement on uh, Elgin's return. So, um, I, I very, gotta, very interesting stuff. I gotta say, you know, this isn't the first time we've had, uh, you know, very public kind of disagreements. There's the weird stuff that happened when Kenny King uh, hopped over to TNA, for instance. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's Davey, Rich- there's Davey Richards was very public of like his dislike of the company yeah. during his 
Um, I don't know later. what it is about. Maybe it's because of the big corporation, the people in charge. I don't know. Uh, uh, Jim Cornette has been very public about his time with the company as well. Um, mm. I, I mean, I think to a point, you're always going to have this uh, with any company. You know, I mean, how many? I, I'm. Uh, how many times you hear? Uh, I, I don't know. Here locally, I hear in person. Uh, Shane mm. Douglas running down Dixie Carter every chance he gets. You know, yeah, or but, any other uh, former former TNA talent. Oh yeah, know. really? And, and, and you know, yet I'm hearing a Vince Russo interview today, uh, yesterday, no today, um, where he's saying, "No, Dix, Dixie Carter is the most like human person in the wrestling." <laughs> you know, um, you know, it's, it, it's it, always yeah, to me, it's always a very strange scenario when these things are brought to the forefront, and mm-hmm. and and you know, it's it's for everyone to see. I guess you could say, mm-hmm. um, uh, I I you. I don't know if social media is the cause of that. I think a cause of that is like the era of uh, of uh, shoot interviews and, and and that kind of aspect, which very much you know tells people of you know why this person hates this person or whatever. Yeah, um, I, I think it just lifts the veil a little because it is so accessible. Um, they can pull the trigger, and now everybody's seen it, and it's making news headlines. You know, I actually and I had a discussion actually this past weekend, uh, sort of something similar to this um, about how. If the idea of independent wrestling fans or probably even just wrestling fans in general, they they want to to know everything that's happening, but I think there's a case of there's a lot of people that d- wrestling is is considered by many to be an escape mechanism as yes. something you do to get away from your you know your job or you, or whatever you know problems are happening at home or whatever, and it's something for you to sort of escape from. So you kind of want to escape and you don't want to know the backstage going on and you don't want to know the things that are happening behind closed doors and, and stuff that, like that. And I think that lends to, you know, I've mentioned many times on the wrestling mayhem show, this idea that I don't want to read the dirt sheets as much as we have. And I still, I mean, it's, it's my feed, mm-hmm. you know, it's in my RS feed mixed in with everything else. Unfortunately, I should maybe clean it up a little. Um, but and I think there's a lot of people that a lot of people in wrestling that think that that's what fans want, and I, I gotta disagree completely. I, unfortunately, that's what they hear. It's 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 the most vocal of the crowd is what they're hearing. The people that read all that stuff and and want to know the backstage. Like I I I, I can't help listening to like the Jim Ross uh, uh, podcast, uh, mm-hmm. and 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 just 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 it's. I, I don't think he is, but he comes off as a bitter bitter, uh, bitter ex employee. Yeah. You know, I, regardless, he talks about WWE with the same, you know, vitriol that I do, my former employer of six years that I scrambled to get out of, you know, um, yeah. and, and and it's like, but still, you know, lending to, hey, we I had the best years of my life there, you know, but still mm-hmm. a lot of complaining. Um, and I think that's that's, you know, when you hear somebody talking like that or Mike Elgin talking about Ring of Honor, ah, they don't know what they're doing, da 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 that becomes news because of the kind of industry it is. And yeah. again, you know, in the last ten years we've come to this point where we hear about all that stuff and can hear all about all that stuff. And you know, coming from like coming out in magazines ten years ago to coming out on Twitter ten minutes ago, you know, yeah. um I think that's changed that. And because um, we're moving from an industry that was veiled to not being veiled and everybody uh-huh. feels important because they know what's going on now and want to know everything that's going on. Um, I think that's just changed this giant dynamic, you know, I, I think, and I actually have thought about this for a good while is the idea that I, I personally believe, you know, people can rest, you know, wrestlers opinions of how wrestling is these days, you know, like I feel like social media will be a big hindrance in professional wrestling and it has zero to do with wrestling fans mm-hmm. and it has everything to do with wrestlers on on social media i i think it's it's you know that's the that's the the issue in it all i think mm-hmm. it's you know i but you know i i can see hopefully this was something that you know won't damage ring of honor too much because like you mentioned they have had some problems in the no past. I, I don't think it's going to damage anything uh ring of honor um has been very um, good about picking up and moving on, I think. Um, I mean, you can say they've suffered just big losses recently with uh, 
<clears throat> excuse me, Kevin Steen, El Generico a couple years ago, they're yeah. always bleeding talent because they are number three. They're just like ECW. They're the breeding ground. And they mm-hmm. were everybody will always leave for greener pastures. But some people will always come back like AJ Styles and Matt Seidel that had a killer match two weeks ago in, in Wheeling, West Virginia, that you'll see on TV soon. Um, mm-hmm. There's an interesting cycle that's happening there that's keeping them afloat, and they're still bringing up new guys. Um, I hope Mike Elligan is a guy that maybe NX, you know, NXT or TNA look at. I hope I see him on my TV soon. I hope I see him back in IWC soon. Uh He's a little more free now. Maybe that's the case, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I'd love to see all that. I, I, he's a. Uh, I really like him as 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 a wrestler. I lo- I like watching him. Um, my wife likes doing the DVD booth next to him. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, you know, I hope he. You know, I hope this was a decision that didn't come lightly. It yeah. doesn't sound like it did. Um, you know. Uh, but you know, it sounds like it sounds like there was like just bigger issues going on here, um, and maybe it is a little bit of something with the company culture with Ring of Honor because you know, you know, we we kind of like say that they're the biggest independent, but they are owned by a massive media conglomerate. They are yeah. in Sinclair Broadcast, um, so it is a really interesting dynamic, and I think that's probably changing a lot of things with them too. So, absolutely. But yeah, so uh, I I sure if the situation updates, we'll we'll give you more updates on the Indy Mayhem show, but yeah, um, basically how it's looking. Uh, uh, I guess uh, we can talk about, you know, there, there's been some stuff that happened in independent wrestling this past weekend. Not to, what? Not to hum- yeah, not to, hum- not to humble brag. No. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, I heard some guys from Philly came down to Texas. But, you know. I heard some really good things about a certain announcer in indie wrestling on the Wrestling Mayhem show earlier, I gotta say. I, I, I did hear those things too. Right at the um, top of the show uh, too. Yeah, uh, surprisingly enough. Um, yeah, uh, basically, for those that don't know what I'm talking about, Inspire Pro Wrestling, we had our, uh, probably, probably, and then I would say for many reasons, one of our biggest events this past weekend, which was our Battle Wars event, uh, that we did, that we did with, in conjunction of, with, uh, Chikara Pro Wrestling. Uh, it was a, a, a phenomenal weekend for me, but a phenomenal night and, and just a really great time. Uh, it, I, to my knowledge, this is our, this was our largest crowd that we have drawn. I believe the official number from what I heard, uh, was uh, around 390. Nice. Uh, so right on that cusp of 400 and, and that's our, the biggest we've ever gotten. Um, and the crowd was phenomenal. They were hot for everything. Like they, they we were so worried about, you know, sort of them getting burnt out on stuff, but they kept it for everything. And, and that's an amazing testament to our crowd. And, and I, I give all the love and support to them because they make, they're one of the good things that makes this truly fun. Um, and and it, it, I mean, it was absolutely a blast. Uh, like I mentioned, we had the start from Chikara Pro down. Uh, the Colony, Fiery, and Silverhand killed it in the main event against the ACH and JoJo Bravo. It's just a fun, really fun, just. Uh, it, it was very much in the Jakarta style. Uh, uh, some really cool stuff came from there. Um, it, it was just a fun showing, and the cr- like I said, the crowd was phenomenal during it. Gave a lot of love to the guys from Jakarta Pro, uh, and uh, I've gotten to personally hang out with the guys this weekend uh, a great deal, actually, um, and, and talk to them and, and, and get to know them a bit more. And, and uh, from what I could tell, all of them loved the experience uh, of working for Inspire Pro. They they had nothing but good things to say, and that and that makes us really happy um, that they really enjoyed themselves and 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 had a fun time and, and really just got the as their first Texas Texas experience. It, it was really cool um, uh, to have them down and and be a part of. Them. I got to call matches with you know uh, Bryce Roundsburg, who we had on a couple weeks ago. Just a phenomenal guy. Probably one of the nicest dudes I've ever met in independent wrestling. Um, he, that was amazing and, and, and a big like bucket list thing. I got to call with uh, Silver Ant at one point. Uh, the main event I got to do with Dasher Hatfield, which was phenomenal. Um, and, and all those guys are just really just class act, top-notch people. I can't say that enough. Uh, it was so much fun getting to you know host them and 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 you know, get to know them a bit more. Uh, I, I, per- I personally got to treat all five of the uh, visiting uh, Chikara stars to their first ever Whataburger experience, which I was very happy about. Uh, and they all thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, 
uh, there was some really cool stuff. Uh, uh, also, there's nothing more fun than uh, uh, after a wrestling show going out with a bunch of uh, luchadors and 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 independent referees and 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 all that stuff on on Sixth Street in Austin, Texas, and just bar hopping with them and then just having a good time. It, it, I that's that's a memory that will stick with me for a while. Um, I can't. I I know I may be rambling, but I can't, I can't say enough good things about these guys. Uh, just amazing, amazing stuff. And they all put on phenomenal uh, matches as well. Um, another uh, guest that we had on that show that was super awesome and, and sort of an, uh, like another checkoff list sort of thing for us, the weirdest checkoff list that we've ever had. And, and it's, it was really crazy. Um, Teddy Hart appeared for us. Um, anyone who knows Teddy Hart uh, and has known the, the reputation that he's built – uh, you know, it, it was an, definitely an interesting grab, but our fans were, I would say our fans were just as excited about that as, as the Chikara guys because they didn't know what to expect. Um, Mr. Money was in attendance, uh, his professionally trained uh, uh, cat, uh, who was amazing, and I got a picture with, so my life is fulfilled. Um, had a, was really, a, honestly, a really great professional and a great guy, uh, and I can't attest to that enough how great he was. Um, uh, yeah, as we, as we see my, uh, my, my shot with, uh, Teddy Hart and Mr. Money, I actually picked up a Teddy Hart t-shirt as well that I'm wearing right now. Um, but, uh, uh had a, a bit of an impromptu matchup, uh, Scott Summers, his original opponent couldn't make it. Uh, so instead, uh, two guys who we've actually had on the Indie Mayhem show before, uh, Scotty Santiago and Thomas Shire got to, uh, to fill that role in a triple threat for, uh, our newest title that we have, the, uh, Inspire Pro Pure Prestige Championship, uh, and this match was very much insane and, and crazy, and, and the crowd ate it up like like mad. And, and Thomas Shire was able to pull out the victory. Uh, you know, phenomenal showing. I, I can't say enough good things about him, and I'm glad that he got the opportunity to wrestle in, in this environment and 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 take home our, and become our first pure, uh, pure Prestige Champion. Uh, really amazing stuff for Shire. And and. Just to attest to the event some more, I think that this was a show where a lot of people, a lot of young talent uh, knew that – I mean, I think they knew that this was our biggest attended show ever. Uh, I think they knew the opportunity that came with wrestling in front of the Chikara guys uh, or with the Chikara guys as well um, and, and the stuff that could come from that. And I think a lot of young talent stepped up and really busted ass. And, and there was – too many contenders for match of the night to really um, to pick one. Uh, uh, a guy who I, I personally want to have on the show, and I, I, I may ask him to be our next guest uh, on my week, uh, a guy by the name of Steve Arino uh, was in a three-way against Dasher Hatfield and the surprise, uh, the surprise mystery opponent of Tadasuke from Osaka Pro Wrestling and a former uh, Chicago Young Lions Cup champion. Phenomenal showing, and I think uh, he he attested to what I think a lot of people know is that he is a phenomenal pro wrestler uh, who doesn't always get the chances that he deserves. Uh, and, and I was more than happy with his performance. Another one was the uh, eight-person elimination tag that I would encourage you to seek out uh, anytime uh, you uh, – uh, at the time when the DVD does come out, uh, featuring the new movement, which includes friends of the show, uh, Jiggle James Johnson was in it. Uh, Delilah Doom was a part of that. Had uh, really great showings. Uh, Cherry Ramon and, and Keith Lee uh, against the uh, the guys that every show that they compete on for Inspire Pro constantly impressed me, uh, which is the talent from NWA Wrestling Revolution out of McAllen, Texas. Uh, Eric Shadows, Matt Riot, who make a phenomenal team. Uh, the debut of Tony Strong, who I knew I very rarely knew anything about Tony um, uh, before his appearance for us. He is one to watch, absolutely one to watch. Uh, and Kat Green, who uh, came off uh, from her last appearance at Inspire in a match against Athena, that was phenomenal. Uh, and uh, took it to, some, to, to a lot of the male competitors in the match, uh, even 350-pound uh, Keith Lee, who powerbombed her pretty much to death. And, and she is an absolute trooper. And she, um, she kind of... I think is should be a, a big inspiration for up and coming uh, uh, independent women's wrestlers because she's you can tell watching her wrestle that she's got a lot of talent and that she wants wants this really bad. So um, 
can't say enough good things about her. Uh, like I said, up and down. Card was great. I, I, I feel like I'm, you know, you know, talking up myself and talking up my company, but I, I just really loved Sunday no, night. No, no, you had a really good experience, and and that's, I mean, I think that's 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 good to point out is like when something goes really, really good with pro wrestling like yes. this, you know, because there's so much that doesn't, you know. I mean, we talked about when things don't go well, which I experienced a couple months ago, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, it happens. You know, we, we used to talk about. Uh, you've been to weird shows before, you know. Imagine working right. the other side, like where you are now. You're very, I think you're very fortunate to be uh, tied up with who you are down there. Um, mm-hmm. and and that's really cool to see. Yeah, um, I it, it, it feels good for us too as a company. I can attest to um, the res- um, the response, especially from the Chicago guys. Like Bryce Remsberg told me, um, many times uh, uh, uh during that night that uh. Yeah, it's like we you know, told us pretty much like we worked for some shit indies in the past, you know, and you know, but this was a good crowd, a great crowd, the great energy, the great promotion that that's looking to do some big things, and and they had the fact that they were happy with their experience and that they were more than willing to do this again. Um, I think that in turn is a big success for us, um, and and was just I think a big. Uh, uh, a great capper to to that weekend. Um, so definitely, when the DVD does come out, uh, and and some more DVDs should be rolling out soon, uh, not just through Smart Mark Video, but through some other media as well. Uh, hopefully, we'll, I'll be able to announce some of that stuff very soon. Uh, definitely go buy them and buy this event in particular because it is one of the most fun times that we've ever had as as being a part of a wrestling promotion. Uh, we also made a big announcement that the next time. Uh, you'll get to see Inspire Pro Wrestling Action. Actually, won't be at the Marquesa Hall and Theater uh, this time around because we're actually participating for the very first time uh, in the three-day uh, uh, music, comedy, uh, everything festival event uh, in Austin, Texas, called Fun 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 Fest uh, down over at Auditorium Shores. It's probably one of the biggest uh, uh, musical uh, social events. Uh, that that happens in Austin, Texas. It's up there with you know South by Southwest is one thing, but Fun 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 Fest is kind of another gigantic thing in Austin that happens every year. And we get to be a part of it. And we get to provide some wrestling, and and that's really awesome. Uh, uh, there's there's a, a phenomenal lineup of, of musical talents. I believe Judas Priest is going to be performing. Wiz Khalifa, Nas, uh, tons of com- uh, comedians are doing stuff. Uh, it's going to be a killer weekend, and and. We're excited to be a part of it, uh, November 7th, 8th, and 9th, down over at Auditorium Shores. If you want to get uh, uh, you know more information on the lineup and, and order some of your passes and stuff like that, you can go to funfunfunfest.com. Uh, it's going to – if this week past weekend was one thing, I feel like that weekend could rival it um, as far as just how amazing it will be. Um, so definitely go check that out, and we'll be releasing more information over at inspireprowrestling.com very soon. Uh, when it comes to that event and then the stuff you'll get to see all throughout that weekend. So definitely go check that out and, and we hope to see you at fun, fun, fun fest. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, stuff coming up, uh, here locally. Whoa, is my mic. There we go. Hey, hey. uh, I come up here in the Pittsburgh area, RWA Renegade Wrestling Alliance. I will not be able to attend. I'm actually going to a wedding in Baltimore, but the crew will be down there, uh, doing their thing. The first time I'm letting things go, man. First thing <laughs> I'm letting things happen and they're doing the full setup without me. No boy. Oh boy. Uh, I would definitely be drinking in Baltimore, so I'm not worried about this. Uh, but go check it out, rwalive.com. It'll be a great show either way. Um, and uh, it's Bloody Harvest, Cue Ball Carmichael. Apparently, he's got some history here in the wrestling business, taking mm-hmm. on Ryan Mitchell. And uh, really, they got, uh, I haven't, uh, Ryan Edmonds will be there. Chris Taylor, Serafini, friend of the show. Pat Cusick, a name I haven't really seen. Um, uh, but it should be a good one. They're setting up for the big salute the troops too. Uh, recently announced, uh, of course, Hurricane Helms is going to be there. The big, uh, they 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 had the first one earlier this this year actually at the at uh, California University of Pennsylvania. So mm. um, uh, it, it's going to be a good show. It's, it it the. It looks like they're going to have G Raver against Kino, uh, so they're splitting up the uh, the, the tag team uh, for this month. Uh, so, um, but uh, but they've been really good shows. I, I think they've really stepped up. Of course, BJ Whitmer showed up at the last show, kind of out of nowhere, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so that was a kind of a nice surprise. They're attracting a lot of different 
stuff, you know, and uh, and uh, you can see they're filling that gym. <laughs> they're almost That's overfilling right. that gym at this point uh, from the show to show. Uh, so uh, it's good to see, you know, somebody on the upswing, you know, after working so hard for so many years. Uh, so we'll see what how uh, where they go from here. Uh, yeah, and, pretty, and pretty cool uh, to be uh, on I, that ride. So what's up? Absolutely. I, I just want to mention in the chat room. I, I think that was announced uh, uh, to talk about Chikara Alexander Cars brought up. Uh, Chikara did announce that their season finale, uh, the the uh, their season finale uh, will be in December uh, at the ECW Arena. Nice. Uh, uh, so they're get, they're getting back to that venue, which nice. is really cool. Um, so awesome, awesome stuff coming from them, uh, Chikara. Uh, can't say enough good things about the resurgence and the stuff they're doing. So once again, just another endorsement for uh, the folks of Red Chikara crowd. It's entitled "Tomorrow Never Dies." Oh, Chikara, yeah, you're, so, also, you're so amazing. If you notice, all this season is named after uh, uh, James Bond movies. It so. is for your eyes yeah. only. For her for, on Her Majesty's Secret Service, Moonraker. <laughs> can they do this? Are they, they can. They've done it. They've done it in the past. They've done it with a. Uh, I think last season was Batman movies. Uh, so. That this is one little thing of Chikara that yeah, you know, oh, of the many things that makes them awesome. Tremendous. Love the new art style they have going on too. So, mm-hmm. all right, what that is that all the indie wrestling for this week? I think that's it. Hot damn! Uh, thanks for uh, Killer McKenzie for joining us. Great interview there. Checking out what's going on in the Texas area, um, and uh, of course, I put all your pictures on the Mayhem Show account, sir. So you guys can go check the check out <laughs> Amon's pictures with Silver Ant and Teddy Hart and Mister Money. <laughs> can't wait to check out this dvd oh mr money mr money uh with that guys of course you can check us out uh continue the conversation about indie wrestling over at wrestling mayhem show.com on our facebook google plus wrestling mayhem show uh at mayhem show on twitter you can drop us line at good times at wrestling mayhem show or 412-206 wms0 please follow indie mayhem show on the itunes stitcher uh spreaker and iheart radio wrestling mayhem show on the youtube uh as well as everything else going on there big ups to basic sickness at basic sickness.com for the audio uh intros and outros for this show please uh, f- uh follow our friends uh bitly slash Extra Life Insert Coin. Our friends at InsertCoinToBegin.com are doing a 24-hour video game streaming event for donations for Children's Hospital. I'm mm. going to be involved in that. <laughs> I'm going to be awesome. playing video games. I'm going to have to dedicate some time to wrestling video games probably there. Um, so there's that. Um, what else is going on? Uh, 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 you can check us out here live at 11 p.m. Eastern time, 10 o'clock central, live at sorgatronmedia.com for the, the indie mayhem. We talk indies. We have fun with it. Uh, so with that, um, I'm trying to line up a really special guest we were supposed to have before, uh, hopefully in studio. So we'll work on that or next week. Um, <laughs> in, in the meantime, please enjoy the classic, uh, uh, interviews that we've been posting on the Mondays here at wrestling as well. Um, and with that, I'm a Sorg- at Sorgatron on the Twitter for at Amen to please on the Twitters. We'll see you next week. Please support your indie rest. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. For the taste of the pain. Oh, sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Joe is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.